Hi, this is James. Welcome along. As beginner backpackers, my wife and I, along with our Labrador Emma, went for our first wilderness backpacking trip this summer. We went for a five-day trip in Finnish Lapland, sleeping in the tent that we took with us. As anyone with an interest in backpacking will know, the price of equipment can be staggering, and the decisions needed on what to take can be pretty complex. After spending months on research and a lot of money on gear, I thought that I would summarise what we bought for the trip and how it performed out there. So today let's talk about camping and sleeping equipment. Now, we're not the most experienced of campers and even less so when it comes to backpacking. So a lot of research went into what we were going to get in this area. Um, for me, the quality of items for good shelter and good rest are really, really, really important. Uh, so, yeah, we didn't want to save too much here and we wanted reliability. Let's have a look at what we got. So let's start off with the tent. This is the Nordisk Opland 3LW. 3 being a three-person tent and L being lightweight. It is lightweight. It weighs under two kilos and it's a big tent. It has a large vestibule area comfortable to sit in with a uh, headroom above and uh, a good sized three-person sleeping pod. Um, yes, three-person, I'll come back to that. It's a tunnel-style tent, very easy to put up, very easy to break down. Um, didn't really have too many problems fitting it in the supplied sack, which can sometimes be an issue. Um, it can be loosened or tightened slightly, give you a bit of space to uh, put your tent in and then make it slightly smaller in the sack rather than having an ultra tight sack to try and fit it into, which um, yeah is really appreciated when out in the wild trying to pack up in non-ideal conditions and you just want to get it in the bag and get going. So the three person size, um, if you have three people on regular sized sleeping pads, yeah, you'll fit in, no problem. We had two people on wide sleeping pads and wide sleeping pads for us are pretty essential. We also had a dog in between us on a sleep system which is slightly wider than a wide sleeping pad, although, yeah. It was slightly folded up at the sides, but that meant that the two of us were pushed out to the sides of the tent and rubbing against the outer walls, which when it was wet meant condensation, it meant a, a, a bit of moisture inside the, the sleeping pod, which is not ideal, but wasn't disastrous. Or it wasn't soaking. Um, so there we are. Our dog, we could have left her out in the vestibule, um, but she is a Labrador, so a people dog, and she likes to be with people. Added to that, we didn't want to leave her out there to be attacked by mosquitoes or other bugs. We didn't want her trying to break into the sleeping pod in the middle of the night to be with us and damaging the tent. She gets a bit of extra warmth between us and it wasn't a huge issue. But in the future, um, if we're two people on wide sleeping pads alone, perfect. Um, that would do the job well. Vestibule has plenty of space for all of our shoes, rucksacks, whatever gear, um, no problem. When I did a test setup of this tent after buying it, I noticed just how thin the ground sheet is um, and obviously yeah it's it's a lightweight tent so they want a, as lightweight a ground sheet as possible. Um, you can use it like that no problem but 
it will be slightly more susceptible to damage, not give you as good a protection against the ground for water or whatever else. So um, what we did was we picked up the footprint for this particular tent. And the footprint has several advantages. Um, it has one disadvantage, which I'll come back to, but it, uh, the first thing is, once you get to camp, you can take it out. You can um, spot your, your, your tent site. You can shift the footprint around and work out exactly where you want your tent without having to put the whole thing up and go, oh, no, it doesn't quite fit there. Um, it gives you a really good base to put your stuff on, to put the tent on top when you're setting it up, so there's not going to be any dirt or moisture getting onto the tent. All of that will be on the underside of the ground sheet. Um, so, yeah, this is well protected then. When your tent is set up, you then have also a clean, dry um, vestibule floor, so wonderful. Um, it's, yeah, for, for packing up, you have a, a dry, clean tent because you're doing it on top of this. The disadvantage, as I mentioned, is the weight. Um, it's 750 grams, which with, when you compare with a tent that's under two kilos, it makes a significant difference. Um, for us, it was worth it. Now, if you want to go ultra light and um, you're not so worried about having the advantages that I just mentioned, you can do without. That's how it is. Um, but this, for us, was great. The tent itself performed well in all weathers. Um, we had heavy rain, we had high winds, we had yeah, sunny days, um, some warmer nights, some colder nights. Everything was good. As I mentioned, there was a little bit of moisture um, coming at the sides of the pod when we were pushed up against them. The moisture didn't really come through the top, so that's good. No moisture through the seams, that's great. Um, one issue may have been the door. Uh, the door is a good size. It opens well from top or from the bottom. It has a zip covering which um, fastens with a magnet, which is also great, so no toggles or Velcro, that's good. Little stuff sack inside the tent to put the door if you want to leave it uh, open, that's good. But whenever there was any moisture, whenever it was raining, so moisture on the outside of the tent or just rain coming down, as soon as you open the door from whichever way, moisture is coming in, water dropping down onto the footprint, into the tent. Um, not ideal, but if you're going in and out quickly, if you're just opening in the rain or when the tent's covered in moisture in the morning and a bit of water drops in, you can mop it up with a towel and it's not a big issue. So that's the Nordisk Scotland 3LW. One thing I forgot is um, the sleep pod. It can be removed and put back very easily inside the tent with uh, little hooks. So when you remove it, which you can fold up to a really small size, with the footprint you have a huge area inside under cover where if you're sheltering for a full day or extended time in horrible weather, it's really great to have a space where you can move around, you can cook, you can play games, you can do whatever out of the weather. Um, so that's great. The other advantage to this, and we actually didn't do what I just mentioned because the weather was never that bad, um, but the advantage that we had was that when it was raining heavily in the morning and we needed to break down the tent to move on, we could unhook 
all of the bits of the sleeping pod, fold up, keep them dry, put them in the bag ready, um, so everything clean, everything dry. The only things that were left were the outer sheet of the tent and the footprint to pack up in the rain, which we could do very quickly and just store them in a separate bag to all the rest of our stuff. And um, in our case, the rain stopped by the evening so we could dry things out a little bit and then put them up and um, they, uh, they were dry. If that wasn't the case, then we could set up again in the rain, um, put the outer shell up, have the, the footprint, could wipe down the footprint with a towel, and then set up all of our stuff within the shelter in the dry. So that was, was a really good advantage. And that's it for the tent. So the next item is sleeping pads. Now, um, we wanted wide sleeping pads. I mean, for us, comfort is really important and we're not great camping sleepers. We're not great at sleeping away from our bed. Um, so we wanted as much comfort as we could get within a reasonable weight. Uh, so we went for the Nemo Tensor Insulated Regular Wide and the Big Agnes Rapid SL Insulated Regular Wide. These are both very good. We first got the Nemo um, after looking at many reviews. I was really happy with uh, the size, weight, comfort, supposed sound insulation, um, the uh, temperature insulation was also very important. And uh, these both actually have the same temperature insulation with an R value of, what is it, 4.2. So yeah, that's pretty impressive. And we never had issues with cold coming up from the ground. They performed perfectly for us in um, what was summer, but summer in the Arctic. So um, yeah, it got cold, not, not down to freezing, but it got cold. Um, and they performed very well in that respect. Um, the reviews I read said that the Nemo is very quiet compared to other similar pads. And... If that's the case, I'm really happy we went with this because it's certainly not silent. Um, they make noise, but it was okay. Didn't disturb our sleep or anything. If we had a noisier pad, eh, it may have been an issue. So I'm happy we went for the quieter option. Um, yeah, this is super comfortable, easy to pump up, easy to pack away. Uh, very light as well. This particular one is 540 grams. The Big Agnes is 680 grams, so a bit different. Um, the pack sizes, this one slightly longer and thinner, shorter and fatter, with the additional weight, uh, although yeah, both, both pads are very similar in terms of length, width and thickness. The Rapid has um, thicker edges, which is a, a, a design feature for a supposedly more comfortable sleep. Um, so after getting the Nemo, we were really happy with that and wanted to get another one. Uh, it wasn't available anymore at the good price we got it for, so instead we chose to compare with the, the Big Agnes and uh, yeah we picked that one up. Um, I slept on this, my wife slept on this, we were both happy. This being a little bit heavier it's a bit tougher so whether it stands up to a bit more rough and tumble, a bit more yeah harder or more uneven floors, I don't know, but both of them held up really well so far for us. So uh, that's great. The 
comparison I would make where one is a clear winner over the other is with the pump sacks. The Nemo has a really good one and the Big Agnes doesn't. This is where I can compare because I was the one pumping both of them up. The Nemo has a pump sack with a quite slim mouth so you're blowing in from a little distance. Um, it's a, a vortex sack so it, it takes the breath and fills up and then you pump the, uh, the air in. So with the thin opening one fold and it's all sealed and you're pushing all of the air into the mat. With the Big Agnes it has a very wide opening at the top so once you've filled this up it's very hard to trap all of the air in and push it into the sack so you're losing air as you squeeze and uh, compact the top. There is a uh, an alternative Big Agnes pump sack but that comes with a price, so the last time I checked it was about 40 euros and it's not just a pump sack, it is also a waterproof bag so it has multi-functionality. For us, yeah, we don't need another waterproof bag, um, just a good pump sack would be good. If I was using a waterproof bag and I needed it to store stuff in, I don't want to empty all that stuff just to use it as a pump sack. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say, but both really good products, really comfortable, we both were very happy with them, um, neither of us bottoming out, we didn't have any leaks, tears, issues, um, warm and comfortable, both good products. So let's move on to sleeping bags. Um, Sleeping bags have been a bit of an issue over the years. Um, neither myself nor my wife have liked sleeping in sleeping bags. And we've only ever used the cocoon style sleeping bag where your legs feel pressed in, they're a bit tight. Um, yeah, and this is not a cocoon style sleeping bag. This is a Nemo Disco 15 men's regular sleeping bag. The Disco sleeping bags from Nemo are specifically designed for side sleepers. They have what's known as a spoon shape, which basically means they're slightly wider at the shoulders and the knees uh, to give you space to move around and sleep on your side and not feel that pushed in cocoon thing. Um, they're down sleeping bags, so compressing down to a pretty small size, very light. Um, that's great. The 15 refers to the temperature rating, which is Fahrenheit and it's the limit temperature. So this being a men's, it's uh, telling me it's, uh, it actually tells me on the sack it has a limit of 14 Fahrenheit, uh, although it's a 15 Fahrenheit rated sack. 14 Fahrenheit being uh, minus 10 Celsius. The comfort rating 25 Fahrenheit or minus 4 Celsius and extreme minus 21 Fahrenheit and minus 29 Celsius. Uh, yeah, Didn't have any issues myself with uh, temperature. As I said, we didn't have extreme temperature there. It did get cold and it got windy. It was also at times mild uh, and this sack was, was comfortable in all weathers. I'll get on to the, some of the features of the sack in a moment that helped with that. When I first bought this sack, my, well, I, I tried it first and was like, oh, okay, we've got a comfortable sleeping bag. My wife tried it as well and thought the same. Oh, comfortable sleeping bag, I want one. So we looked for the, the women's version and there is a women's, regular which is slightly smaller than this um, men's regular so she was happy with this size and wanted this size and the women's large is this size the only difference being it's a bit warmer seeing as uh, women need a slightly warmer bag to achieve the same temperature rating as men do so we looked for it, 
and couldn't find it and couldn't find it and couldn't find it and just wasn't available anywhere particularly in Europe so uh, in the end we settled for getting another one in the men's and um, worked well she did say that on the final night which was the coldest and windiest she wasn't so warm could have worn yeah <laughs> more insulated clothing or, or something but uh, yeah ideally we would have had the, the women's sack for her and then I'm sure she would have been that little bit warmer and would have been great as a three season sack um, still wasn't a major issue so let's move on to looking at some of the features of the sack and I have here the storage bag for this sleeping bag which uh, you don't store it in a stuff sack that's not great for the down um, you keep it nice and aerated in this and first we have this uh, duvet fold which looks like a bit of a gimmick but when you're sleeping in it and your arms are around it it gives you somewhat of a duvet feel comfort and then when it is cold you can tuck it inside to give you that extra bit of warmth and sealing around the opening um, with this opening you can also close it up slightly with uh, this so you can really seal yourself in and uh, keep the wind out which was, as I mentioned, pretty essential on that last night. When the warmth is, isn't an issue, or keeping the warmth in, and the opposite is true, what we have here are these thermogills. Now what these are, are zips, where you can open up, and as the name suggests, they're gills, so you breathe through them, they don't have the insulation, they let out heat and I used these in the first couple of nights which did let out, let out heat and were yeah, really handy. Um, there is another feature here which is a small zip pocket uh, where you can put in small electronics or maybe a water filter if it's getting really cold and you want to protect it from freezing or any other, yeah, probably not big enough for many phones these days, but it's, uh, I didn't use it, um, but it's there. So, the next thing is inside the hood of the sleeping bag, there is a pocket, and this pocket is for a pillow, specifically a Nemo Philo pillow but you can stuff it with clothes or any other soft stuff you have with you on your trip and uh, then you, you do a DIY pillow. Um, we had Nemo Philo pillows, which are these. This is in the stuff sack. Let me take it out of the stuff sack. And these are great. The stuff sack fits inside the pillow, so you're not misplacing that anywhere, it's always there. And we have quite a thick foam layer on the outside, which makes it really, really comfy. There's a vent, you open the vent, give it two to three breaths and you're filled. Close the vent. And there you have a really comfortable pillow. Um, I read the reviews, they were all great, picked it up, still was surprised how comfortable it was. So, mm, yeah, this is good. And I'm just gonna let the air out again. You can adjust how much air you want as a, an accordance to how inflated or how, how hard you want the pillow, although hard is maybe not the right word because the foam makes it so soft. So this pillow will stuff 
inside the pocket. I'm doing this now deflated because otherwise it won't go in so well. But once it's in, then you can give your breath. Close the vent. And there you have a really comfortable pillow built in to the hood section of the sleeping bag, and that's not moving anywhere, it's secure, don't have to worry about your pillow going whoop, off to the side or behind your, um, your sleeping pad, it's, it's securely in place which is great. Um, the other thing with the fillows is they're not just for trekking or camping, you can use them as pillows for general travel, we use it for going to a swimming pool or beach and having something comfortable there since you know why not it's a, a great comfortable pillow that packs down really small is lightweight and yeah the one thing I would say is there are multiple pillow pillows um, this is the regular there's different shapes and sizes. This regular one fits perfectly inside that sleeping bag. There is also an ultra light version, which I can't remember what the name of it is, whether it's called ultra light or something else, but you get the idea. It has a less thick foam layer um, to make it pack down smaller and lighter. It's more expensive. I can't compare how comfortable it is compared to this one, um, but it's it's an option. But this one, we were happy with. I mean, super happy with how comfortable it is. It weighs a bit more, but that's not such an issue. It's cheaper. This was good for us. The final item I will look at in this video is towels. Um, yeah, we already have one of these. This is a fox trekking towel uh, from the company XXL, uh, fox being their own brand. Um, and our daughter had used it for some of her camping trips and had no problems. It's a microfiber towel, pretty cheap, um, decent size, packs down well pretty absorbent, uh, does the job, has a, as you'll see on all of these, has a, a strap which you can then hang it off a, whatever really, you can hang it off a, a washing line or a tree or more importantly off your backpack when you're hiking to dry it out. Um, so yeah, this, this we had. Um, and we actually picked up another one, which is why it's included here. And we did take it along with us. We took it for the dog um, to dry her off and use as more of a really dirty towel. Um, we realized it wasn't maybe as good as some other towels. So we went looking at the last minute for some better towels to take with us. Uh, so this we took as our cheap one. What we picked up next was the Sea to Summit Pocket Towel Microfiber. Um, this is really good. Uh, it's a large size. It did actually come with a semi-hard zip case, uh, which we've misplaced. Yeah, I don't have a case for this one anymore. Uh, this also has the same popper strap, so uh, oh, let me not break it, get it from the right side. Um, yeah, so this is 60 centimeters by 120 centimeters or 24 by 48 inches. Um, really absorbent and more importantly, dries really quickly, which this one doesn't. So yeah, this was great. We took it, we used it for ourselves or for drying the, the footprint as I mentioned earlier or things like that and it would just dry out as soon as the sun came out um, so hang it off the rucksack and it dries 
This one never dried all week. We wanted to get another one of the CETA summits, but this was the last one in stock, so we went to another shop and picked up this, which is the Cocoon Ultralight Microfiber Towel Size L. It's pretty much exactly the same as this. Um, only difference is the sack, which, yeah, this one you can still see. It's a soft sack, um, which doesn't make the slightest bit of difference to me. Um, it has a slightly different strap. This one is a clip strap rather than a popper strap, but hey. Same properties, same size, absorbent, quick drying, great stuff, does the job, similar price for both of them. They were both around whew, maybe 25 euros, slightly under, and this one was about seven or eight euros. So the old adage, you get what you pay for. But uh, yeah, that's that. If you would like me to go into any more depth with any of these items from today's video, please let me know in the comments below. I'll leave a description of all of these items in the description below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.